President Bolotinibu yesterday inaugurated three critical gas projects in Delta and Imo states, pledging to reverse Nigeria's overdependence on petrol and diesel to more efficient natural gas resources. The president spoke virtually at the commissioning of the expansion of the Ashta Vinayak hydrocarbon gas processing plants in Delta, the Asa North Ohaji gas processing plant in Ohaji, Egbema, and the Obiafu Obrikam Oban transfer metering station gas pipeline projects. Tinibu stated that the three projects are of utmost importance to him as it significantly increased Nigeria's aspiration to embrace cleaner and more efficient fuels. To retreat the federal government's resolve to continue to, pro to provide support to different domestic gas, gas utilization, increase national power generation capacity, revitalize industries create new and exciting job opportunities. Two things have happened in our country today. There is an ample fiscal environment today. The laws are good. It encourages gas development. Taxation is lower. Businesses can make more money from gas in this country. And that's why we are seeing renewed interest in taking investments in the floating LNGs. That's already what is already happening. We are already progressing massively on one other LNG project. I've not mentioned the name because of the non-disclosure agreement with our partners. And there are a number of other plotting LNG projects that are now ongoing. And this is really a history in the making. Now, David Watau, investment research analyst at ARM Securities, joins me now to discuss this further. David, good morning to you. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Good morning. Great. Now, well, let's begin with the gas projects. How would you assess the potential significance of it? Okay, uh, first of all, I'd say um, we should commend the Tinubu administration for uh, completing these projects in uh, such, you know, in such good time. Um, this project is actually very, very much important for the gas, um, for the gas sector. Uh, so first of all, uh, I think we can recall that in uh, early, earlier parts of this year, 2024, we saw that uh, uh, electricity supply had declined by about, um, to about 2,500 uh, megawatts um, from 4,000 megawatts, which was what it was on previously. Uh, you know, this was actually because of um, a shortage in gas supply uh, from uh, gas suppliers who felt like they were owed and were not paid. Um, this, you know, this uh, development by the Tinibu administration is going to uh, ensure that uh, there's a 500,000 500, 500 uh, mega, uh, MSCFH of uh, gas supply, uh, which would mean a um, 25% increase in gas supply. Uh, it is a wonderful move, and I'm sure that uh, we should see more coming from that. Yeah, so it's certainly quite promising. And also, you know, we have to emphasize the need to embrace cleaner and more efficient uh, fuels is also a great impetus here. Yeah, but now true. the president says that he wants to wean Nigeria off the overdependence from, you know, petrol and diesel products. Is this possible? Yes, I'll say this is very, very much possible. Uh, already, we've seen steps taken by the government um, with these power plants, with these uh, gas plants, um, with the uh, AHL gas plants and AH. Uh, AOC, o e e n e n uh, e n o h gas plants too, right? So uh, also with the uh, OB3 uh, pipeline, you know, we've seen go this is, these are government's efforts, you know, targeted towards improving production for gas. Um, we've also seen, um, you know, previously when the go when when the president uh, made an order to uh, you to, to to start to integrate CNG. Um, vehicles, right? Which would, uh, which you know, normally our transport systems are already uh, clogged with petrol vehicles and diesel trucks. It would CNG vehicles are, um, you know, um, more eco-friendly, and CNG is also cheaper. So yes, I believe the governments are well on their way to achieving uh, that objective. So you are uh, an ardent of that. Uh, I guess the right sensitization for the public will also sure. really help in that. But now looking at our oil production numbers in April, Nigeria once produced over 2 million barrels per day. How did we get to this level? Well, I mean, the, um, the problems uh, with the oil production are not new. Uh, it's problems that have been facing the country since, uh, I'd say, since the 1990s, right? Uh, however, we saw a decline in um, oil production post-COVID-19, 
Um, because post COVID-19, we, we were producing above 2 million barrels. Uh, after COVID-19, we've had um, a lot of challenges getting back to that. Uh, I believe, you know, it's basically a recovery. Uh, there is slower recovery uh, in oil production post covid um, but also the um, structural issues that have continued to plague uh, oil production since inception. We're talking about um, pipeline vandalisms, uh, uh, crude oil thefts, uh, insecurity in the host communities. Uh, we're talking about um, infrastructural uh, decadence. So, yes, these are things that have continued to suppress oil production. But now, in light of all these factors that you've just highlighted, is there really a reason to be optimistic in terms of where we're going? Yes, I'll say yes. There's, uh, there's actually a lot to be optimistic for. Uh, although, I would say cautiously optimistic. Yes. Because uh, these this issues I have mentioned, they still remain. But however, we've seen efforts by the governments to actually crop down on oil theft and pipeline vandalisms. We've also seen recently um, where the, uh, the, 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 the just, just started, um, completed a project with OML 13. It's an NPCL and um, a subsidiary of SEPCO. Um, this project is meant to generate about 40,000 barrels of oil by the end of May, about 27th of May. So, yeah, that is the bright spot in sight for oil production, yeah, I but think. I, I refer specifically more to these bottlenecks you've just highlighted, so pipeline vandalism um, um, and all of these issues. Yeah, what, so, what do we see um, in terms of efforts around those? I mean, we've seen efforts in curbing down on oil theft and pipeline vandalism, uh, but yet I still see the government needs to do more. There's more that needs to be done, um, especially in, in respect to the, uh, to, to, to the uh, infrastructure. Yeah, right. Okay. Now, President Tinubu's election manifesto aims for 2.7 million barrels by 2027 and then 4 million barrels by 2030. Yeah. Are these realistic goals, um, in yes, your opinion? Yes, yeah. these are quite realistic. As I said before, before 2020, we were producing well above 2 million Absolutely. barrels. So um, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not above us. It's not something we cannot achieve. Um, I think, as, as, as I have said, um, there has to be... Uh, the, the, the challenges that we are facing right now have to be addressed, properly addressed to achieve that. But um, getting there is not, is not beyond Nigeria, not at all. No, I like the outlook. I mean, you know, you've highlighted and touched on a, a few points around this uh, earlier, but then how would you assess the administration's attention to the oil and gas uh, sector over the past year since coming into office? Okay, thank you for that question. Um, so the, uh, you know, uh, when the, the new president came in with his new with new uh, with new laws, uh, the deregulation of the downstream sector and also the removal of fuel subsidy, uh, you know, these policies basically we saw a lot of uh, there was lots of happening around it. Right, we have seen the government's efforts towards ramping up um, oil production. In Q4 2023, we saw oil production move up to 1.55 million barrels per day. Um, that's coming from 1.45 uh, uh, in Q3 2023. Uh, we've also seen the uh, GDP, oil GDP growth rates grow, um, you know, snap is 14 uh, consecutive uh, quarters of contraction uh, to grow by 12.11% in Q4 2023. These are positives for the oil sector. Um, also, if you see, if you look at the market reactions to this, uh, the oil and gas index, uh, as the oil and gas uh, NGX index um, also rose by 125% year to date in 2023. Uh, it rose by 13.6%, or oh, it has risen by 13.6% year to date um, in 2024. Uh, this, is very, this is very good. It's positive news for the oil and gas sector. So, yeah, we've seen relative um, good growth in the oil and gas sector since the administration took over. Right, so you can say that the wheels are in motion and yes, Nigerians can, are, uh, you know, the fears can be allayed. Definitely. No, no cause for alarm is what you're saying. Well, I mean, Nigeria is still below OPEC's 1.5 million barrel, uh, barrels quarter, rather. What are the implications of this, if any? Um, okay, so the first of all, I'd say... Uh, the implications would depend on how, uh, you know, how bad we fall short of our quota. So uh, I think in dire situations, uh, we would see um, OPEC sanctions, where, for example, last year we saw an OPEC cut, um, oil already cut our quota from 1.7 million barrels to 1.5. Uh, 
Um, this was um, majorly because we had not been able to keep up to our quota for an extended period. Uh, but however, uh, the immediate, um, immediate uh, impact would be uh, a shortage in revenue. We will not be able to make up um, as much um, revenue from oil as we should. Well, if we're looking now at output level, um, we're still lower than 1.78 million barrels for 2024. Yeah. What are the implications of, of not meeting this uh, budget target? So uh, it still goes to a shortfall in budget, budget shortfall. Uh, I mean, it will imply that there will be a deficit in, our, in the budget, which means um, Nigeria will not make enough revenue to meet the uh, estimated uh, budgets, right? So it means the government would have to, uh, you know, cut spending or, or increase borrowings. Uh, if the government has to cut spending, we know this, this is going to uh, affect infrastructural um, progress. Uh, so if uh, the government has to engage in infrastructural developments and other things, they will not be able to, they won't have these funds anymore to invest. So. And we, if we look at the investment attractiveness of the upstream oil sector, how would you assess this? And if you assess it positively, which I suspect you do, <laughs> in what ways can we attract more? Um, okay. So first of all, I'd say this is actually a, a good time uh, to invest in the oil and gas sector because um, with the uh, uh, IOCs divesting assets, uh, IOCs have been divesting, leaving Nigeria. So uh, this is there's more space for domestic players, right, in in the upstream uh, sector. So uh, yeah, although challenges linger. As I have said, challenges linger, but um, while governments continue to try to fix these challenges uh, in terms of the only way, you know, to actually ensure uh, investments into the sector is to uh, tackle the um, in things inhabiting investments in terms of um, security issues, in terms of um, uh, 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 regulatory issues and transparency. So. Yeah, well, quite a myriad of, of issues there, but I like your positive outlook, David, and many thanks for joining the Global Business Report today. Thank you very much.